There are various ways to calculate the enthalpy of a reaction or the enthalpy of a phase change. What we're going to look at is calorimetry as one way of determining the enthalpy. So recall that enthalpy is delta H, it's the heat of something, and the enthalpy of a reaction would be the heat of the reaction. An endothermic reaction, a reaction that absorbs energy from its surroundings, its enthalpy would be positive. And an exothermic reaction, which is a reaction which gives off heat to its surroundings, would have a negative delta H or a negative enthalpy. And remember that heat always moves from high temperature to low temperature. There are actually four ways to determine enthalpy. In this lesson, we're going to talk about calorimetry, the first way, but there are three other ways. There's Hess's law. There are two different methods of using Hess's law. That's why I number them two and three and using bond energies. So let's look at calorimetry. It's a new term, but we know calorie is a measure of energy and metry is metric. So it's measuring, it's measuring energy. It's measuring calories. Calorimetry works as follows. We know that the energy given off or absorbed by reaction can be determined by measuring the heat change of its surroundings. Typically, the surroundings of a calorimeter are water, but they can be other things. So what we're doing is we're measuring the heat given off or absorbed by reaction by measuring the change in temperature of the water that's surrounding the reaction. There are two different types of calorimeters we'll talk about, but we're only going to cover in this lesson the coffee cup calorimeter a more professional calorimeter would be a bomb calorimeter, which can withstand very high, high pressures. The heat given off or absorbed by reaction is Q. And we would calculate enthalpy from that by dividing Q by mole. So enthalpy is heat per mole. So Q is the heat of the reaction. QRXN is the heat of the reaction. And delta H is the heat of reaction per mole of product usually in joules per mole or kilojoules per mole. In a coffee cup calorimeter, it's pretty much what you have. You have some styrofoam cup with the contents of the reactants and the, and the products in the, in the coffee cup and a thermometer. The reaction takes place in water. If the reaction gives off heat, that heat will be absorbed by the water and the temperature of the water will rise. If the reaction absorbs heat, that heat is going to be taken from the water and the temperature of the water will drop. Delta H then can be determined by measuring the temperature change of the water and knowing how much heat it takes to raise or lower the temperature of water given the specific heat of water. This is really, really important. The Q of the reaction is equal to the negative Q of water. What does this mean? The Q of the reaction, the heat of the reaction. So let's say the reaction is giving off heat. It is, it has a negative heat. It actually ends up being a negative Q, it's, but it's giving off heat. Let's not worry about sign right now. It's giving off heat. What happens to that, to that heat? That heat is absorbed by the water. Because it's absorbed by the water, the temperature of the water rises. So we see a higher final temperature than initial temperature. Since the temperature of the water is increasing, we know that the Q of water is a positive number. Its final temperature is larger than its initial temperature. But it is only increasing in temperature because there is energy being provided to it from another source. So it's, it, and it's being provided to it from the reaction. The only reason Q of water can be positive is if the Q of the reaction is negative and it's giving that, react, that energy, that heat energy to the water. So if the Q of water is positive, it's, if it's increasing temperature, we know that the Q of the reaction is negative. It's releasing that temperature, which is then gained by the water. Similarly, if the Q of water is negative, in other words, if the temperature, the final temperature of water is less than the initial temperature, that means that it's giving its energy to something, which is the reaction. So if the Q of water is negative, then the Q of the reaction is going to be positive. That means that that, that reaction will be absorbing energy. Where is it absorbing energy from? From the reaction. We know from previous lessons that the heat of water, heat gained or lost by water is equal to the mass of water times the specific heat times the change of temperature. This is how we're going to figure out the Q of water in a coffee cup calorimeter. We're going to use this equation. We're just going to need to know the mass of water, the specific heat of water, which is a constant, and the change in temperature, which we're going to get from the thermometer in the coffee cup calorimeter.
Of course, the Q of water, the units that it ends up in, depends on Cp. If we're using the first constant, the specific heat of water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius, we'll end up with a Q in terms of calories. Or if we use the second constant, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, we're going to end up with a heat in terms of joules. Let's look at a sample problem. Don't be afraid because it's large, they'll actually even get larger. What we just need to do is find those pieces of information that will help us fill in the equation Q equals MCP delta T. In a coffee cup calorimeter, 1.80 grams of ammonium nitrate is mixed with 74 grams of water at an initial temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So we're given mass and we're given an initial temperature. After dissolution of the salt, in other words, the salt is being dissolved in the water, the final temperature of the calorimeter contents is 23.07 degree, degrees Celsius. Notice that the final temperature is lower than the initial temperature. So water is losing energy. Who is, where is the energy going? It's going into the ammonium nitrate. Assuming the solution has a heat capacity of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, calculate the heat change for the dissolution of ammonium nitrate. So what do we have here? We have the mass of ammonium nitrate, which is 1.80 grams, the mass of water, which is 74 grams, the initial temperature of water, which is 25 degrees Celsius, the final temperature of water, which is 23.07 degrees Celsius, and the specific heat of water, or the solution, which is 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius. They want us to calculate the heat change for the dissolution of ammonium nitrate. It's not really clear whether they want us to calculate Q or enthalpy, which is heat per mole, but let's go ahead and calculate enthalpy. So here we have our equation Q equals M cat, delta T is equal to final temperature minus initial temperature. So our overall equation Q is equal to mass times the specific heat times the final temperature minus the initial temperature. With these calorimetry problems, when we're talking about Q, we're talking about the Q of the water. So we need the mass of the water solution, the specific heat of it, and the final and initial temperature. We know that the mass is a combination of the water and ammonium nitrate, so it's 1.80 grams plus 74 grams. The specific heat is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the final temperature is 23.0 degrees Celsius minus the initial temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius. Notice that since the final temperature is smaller than the initial temperature, we're going to end up with a negative Q. And our negative Q is negative 612 joules. This is the amount of heat given off by the water. Water gives off the heat. How do we know that? Its temperature, its final temperature is smaller. Recall that the heat lost by water is equal to the heat gained by the reaction. So that the Q of the reaction is the negative Q of water. So since the Q of water is negative 612, a negative negative 612 is equal to a positive 612 joules. So the heat of the reaction, the reaction is actually absorbing heat. It's a positive number. It's absorbing 612 joules. And it's absorbing that energy from the water. Finally, to calculate the enthalpy of the reaction, we're going to take the Q of the reaction divided by moles. So where do we have moles? We have this reaction. We have the dissolution of ammonium nitrate in water to form the ammonium ions and the nitrate ions. And we're told that we're starting off with 1.80 grams of ammonium nitrate. Surely we can calculate the number of moles that 1.80 grams of ammonium nitrate are equal to. We do that by dividing by the molar mass. How many moles is 1.80 grams of ammonium nitrate? We know that one mole of ammonium nitrate is 80.05 grams. So we know we have 0 0.0225 moles of ammonium nitrate. So plugging this into our equation, our delta H of reaction, our enthalpy of the reaction, which is equal to the heat of the reaction divided by moles, is equal to Q of reaction, remember, is positive 612 divided by 0 0.0225 moles of ammonium nitrate, and we get the delta H of reaction as 27,200 joules per mole. Or in kilojoules per mole, that would be 27.2 kilojoules per mole. Sample problem number two. In a coffee cup calorimeter, 50 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar silver nitrate and 50 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar hydrochloric acid 
are mixed to yield the following reaction. So we have silver from the silver nitrate reacting with chloride from the hydrochloric acid to make silver chloride solid, a precipitate. So this is, a, um, this is the net ionic equation. The two solutions were initially at 22.35 degrees Celsius, and the final temperature is 23.33 degrees Celsius. So we know that the temperature of the water increased. For water to increase its temperature, this reaction must have given off that energy and that means that the heat of the reaction is going to be negative. Just, just keep that in the back of your mind. We want us to calculate the heat that accompanies this reaction in kilojoules per mole of silver chloride formed. Assume that the combined solution has a mass of 100 grams and has a specific heat capacity of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. We have tons of numbers here. Let's sort this out. We have, um, well, we want to find out the, the, the enthalpy of reaction of in kilojoules per mole of silver chloride formed. We're given 50 milliliters of 0.100 molar silver nitrate. We're given 50 milliliters of 0.100 molar hydrochloric acid, an initial temperature of 22.35 degrees Celsius, a final temperature of 23.33 degrees Celsius, the mass, the total mass as 100.0 grams, and the specific heat of the solution as 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. In all our calorimetry problems, we're going to use our MCAT equation, Q equals MC delta T or MCP delta T, to find the amount of heat gained or lost by water. Okay, so we have the thermometer in the coffee cup. It's measuring the change in temperature of water. The whole solution has a mass of 100 grams. The specific heat is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. The final temperature is 23.33 degrees Celsius minus the initial temperature, which is 22.35 degrees Celsius. So the amount of heat lost or gained by the water is 409.6 joules, 409.6 joules. That means that water is absorbed. How do I know this? It's a positive Q. Water is absorbed 409.6 joules. How else do I know this? The temperature increased. We know that the Q of the reaction is equal to the negative Q of water. So since water is 409.6 joules, the amount of heat absorbed by the water, the amount of heat given off by the reaction has to be negative Q of water, which is negative 409.6 joules. Finally, we're going to use the Q of reaction to solve for the enthalpy of the reaction, which is the Q of the reaction divided by mole. And remember, they asked us to solve for the enthalpy of reaction in, in kilojoules per mole, those will be the units, of the amount of silver chloride formed. So we're going to go ha back to this reaction. We need to figure out moles of silver chloride formed. Here is our net ionic equation. We start off with 50 milliliters of 0.100 molar silver ion and 50 milliliters of 0.100 molar chloride ion. So we want to know how many moles of silver chloride are formed given 50 milliliters of silver ion or 50 milliliters of chloride ion. It wouldn't matter which we started with because there, it's a one-to-one -one molar ratio, and we have the same amount of each. Notice that molarity is not the given, it is the conversion factor, because molarity is moles per liter. So we're starting with 50 milliliters of silver ion. We need to convert that to liters to, to be able to um, use molarity as our conversion factor. So we know that there's 1,000 milliliters in one liter. And then to get liters out of the equation, we're going to multiply it by the molarity, which is 0 0.100 moles of silver ion is equal to one liter. So we have milliliters cancel out, canceling out and liters canceling out. So we're left with moles of silver ion. We need to convert that to moles of silver chloride. And we see that it's a one to one molar ratio. One mole of silver ion makes one mole of silver chloride. And we get that 50 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar silver ion makes 0 0.00500 moles of silver chloride. Now that we have our moles and our Q of reaction, this is going to be easy to solve. Delta H of reaction is equal to the Q of the reaction, which is negative 409.6 joules, divided by the moles of silver chloride formed, which is 0.00500 moles, and we get negative 81,900 joules per mole. Remember, they asked for the answer in kilojoules per mole, so we just are going to divide this by 1,000, and we get negative 81.9 kilojoules per mole.